Hello, thank you for joining us today and welcome today to today's ESHA Research Webinar. Uh, today we're going to look at the menu label, um, the practical applications and best practices of it in Genesis R&D. Um, we've done a couple of webinars on the menu label in the past. Those focus primarily or a lot on the regulatory side of things. Today we're going to look at the actual in-program functions, kind of how to use the menu label um, and best, best practices on that. Before we get into that, we'll do a little bit of our background that we always do. Uh, ESHA Research was established in 1981 as one of the very first nutrition software solutions. Today we have a number of solutions, including Genesis R&D Food, which is the one that we're working in today, Genesis R&D Supplements, Food Processor, Consulting Services, Databasing as well. Like I said, we're looking at the Genesis R&D Food application today. That was released in 1991 uh, and focuses on a number of places including product development, formulation, menu analysis, which is what we're looking at mostly today, reporting, and regulatory compliance. We have one upcoming webinar on our schedule right now, that's the Genesis R&D Supplements application version 1.6 feature review. Uh, that's going to be in a couple of weeks, November 13th, and that's going to look at the new features uh, in the Genesis R&D Supplements program. Um, Keep an eye out, you know, we generally try to avoid the holidays, so December probably doesn't have a webinar for features and functions and things like that, um, but we'll get our schedule out as soon as we can for Q1 of, of 2020. Please note, as always, this webinar is being recorded. It will be available on our website as all of the webinars are, um, and submit those questions as you think of them. Uh, we have a couple people from our consulting team. We have someone from our support team. Uh, I'll be answering questions as well as Alicia goes through a lot of the topics. So ask those questions, we'll answer them. You know, if it's something that, that we think that a lot of people are asking, we'll certainly ask that out loud as well. Uh, not everyone will be read out loud. A lot of it will just be personally responded to. But again, if you have a question, ask it right away. That way we can get to it because we get a, usually a flood of questions at the very end. So ask those questions so we can answer them as fast as possible. What we're gonna look at today, highlights on the menu label features in Genesis R&D. Like I said at the beginning, this is a functional overview of the menu label, looking at the application and what it can do for you. Building a menu, displaying calories, reviewing additional nutrient options, reporting, uh, and looking at some of the, the exporting options, whether it's inside the program or those uh, utilities that we have as well. I'm gonna hand it over to Alicia now and, and she's gonna get into the topic. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, today we're gonna primarily focus on menu labeling features in Genesis R&D. So as Ben mentioned, we've covered the FDA menu labeling regulations in previous webinars. This webinar will highlight things to think about when you're building the menu label in Genesis R&D and working with the options in the menu label features that will help you comply with US regulations. If in your Genesis R&D software you see the term food menu for these features, that means you're using an older version of the software. It could be version 11.4 or prior. So if that's the case, please contact our sales team for information on obtaining the current version. We want you to use the current version so that you have access to the current features and all of the options. Today here I'm showing version 11.7. I do want to highlight just a few of the rules of the FDA menu labeling regulations from the most common questions that we've received. The compliance date for menu labeling was May 7th, 2018. Restaurants and similar food establishments, which are referred to as covered establishments, are those that are part of a chain of restaurants and similar food establishments um, with 20 or more locations doing business under essentially the same name and serving essentially the same type of menu selections. For standard menu items, those consistently offered as part of the routine menu, calories must be displayed prominently on menus and menu boards, and additional nutrition information must be available to patrons upon request. There's much, much more to let menu labeling regulations, and you can find resources on the FDA website with regulations and updated guidance, as well as the FDA menu training module, and that provides an industry overview of the regulations. 
for in-depth instruction on Genesis R&D and the menu labeling regulations, we offer a training session with a specific focus on menu labeling. And this covers the Genesis R&D features, but it also digs deep into menu label creation with recipe and ingredient entry and working through specific scenarios that would be encountered in restaurants in similar settings. And Ben will tell you more about training at the end of the webinar. In addition to reporting calories, where patrons can view the menu selections, covered establishments must have additional nutrient information available upon request. And the nutrients that must be provided upon request are calories, total fat, saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, sodium, total carbohydrates, dietary fiber, total sugars, and protein. Covered establishments may also voluntarily report vitamins and minerals that we see within the food labeling regulations. And a note on calories from fat, it is listed in the menu labeling final rule, but the FDA provided supplemental guidance that acknowledges and allows for the omission of calories from fat. And that's in line with the 2016 food labeling regulations and reflects the FDA's current thinking on declaration of calories. Genesis R&D can report all of these nutrients for you, so let's take a closer look at some of the options that you'll encounter with the menu label features. When working with the menu label features in Genesis, you can establish categories as a way to help you organize your menu items. Examples of categories might be entrees, beverages, desserts, combo meals, kids meals. It's really an open field for you to build your menu as needed. And similar to building recipes in Genesis, you will search through the database to select the items you want to include on your menu. So prior to building your menu, you may need to add your supplier ingredients and build recipes for dishes and combo meals that you want to list on your menu. And we cover ingredient entry and recipe building in other webinars and tutorials, so you might want to check those out if you need a refresher or if you're new to Genesis. You will right-click to access several of the options for the categories and foods, so just note that. And when working with your menu label, you might want to simplify the names displayed in these settings. You may also want to display calories on the screen as you work with items, and you may want to display the price of each just to help you with your workflow. To take a closer look with naming ingredients, recipes, and meals in Genesis, this is a general um, rule of thumb that the best practice is to use a consistent and descriptive naming convention. That will help you track versions of your food items and just keep your records straight. So this might include a form of a date or a coding system that you build right into the name. This doesn't always result in a friendly name for the menu, however, so you may want to assign a common name to each item. With your menu label items, if the common name field in the ingredient or the recipe record is populated, then that is the name that you will see used in the menu label. Otherwise, the full item name will be listed. You can see in this example, the full name of potato salad, 2019-10, it's not really something I would display to the outside world. So I've included the common name of potato salad. And to add or edit the item name, you need to open the item record. So that might be an ingredient record or a recipe record, and you can modify the name or add that common name in the ingredient or recipe record. I'll show you how to do that soon. I just wanted to have you or provide you with these notes along the way. As you work with the menu label in Genesis, you can display a variety of columns. And like I mentioned, it might be helpful to show calories as you work with the items in this view. And price is another piece of information that is helpful when working with the menu as well as information that can be exported when you're ready to do so. In Genesis, the price field refer specifically to the menu label features and price information can be attached to an individual menu label only so not not necessarily attached to an ingredient record or a recipe record what this means is that you can have a different price for an item that occurs on different menus 
Genesis also has a cost field that's a little different. The, um, you can assign an ingredient cost and track that to use for pricing materials or cost of materials and the cost of recipes as you build those. That's a different field. The price field here is intended for listing prices of menu label items that would be displayed to customers. Per the menu labeling regulations, there are instances where you can present calories information on in a range. And these might be used where multiple sizes or selections of a common food type is available or for your combo meals. And you can choose to display the calories range for your categories in the menu label features. Once you've built your menu label, you can view additional information as reports we have the menu label report and the standard nutrient report. The menu label report lists the menu label information and by default, the additional required nutrients. Values for the menu label nutrients are rounded. And you have some flexibility with this report by choosing to include additional details like price, allergens, ingredient information, and comments. And you can change the set of nutrients shown on this report, such as omitting calories from fat or displaying additional vitamins and minerals. Then there's the standard nutrient report. This shows the menu items with the required menu labeling nutrients. This report is pre-formatted, so what you see is what you get here. For the menu label report, I mentioned that you can change the set of nutrients displayed on the report. To determine the nutrients displayed, you want to go to the nutrients to view settings. And from there, you can select from several predetermined sets in the software, or you can create your own. We mentioned this in several webinars. The nutrients to view is one of the basic features in the software that lends itself to several areas within the program, such as the display on many of the reports. And once you've developed your menu and you've entered all the information that you need to accompany the food items, you may want to export the information from Genesis. The menu labeling regulations allow you to present the additional nutrient information in a variety of ways, such as printed materials like on menus, tray liners, or an available binder in the restaurant. You can also make information available on kiosks and other electronic devices. To export information from Genesis, you can find export options from within the menu label record itself, or you can use the Eshaport Import Export Utility to export batch information. So now let me jump into Genesis for a bit, and I'll show you where some of these features are and how you might work with them. So just like any record or file in the software, you have a couple ways you can access those. You, we have the new and the open buttons and clicking on any of those gives you recipe, ingredient, the composite ingredient, advanced labels, and menu label options. You could also create new or open from the top ribbon. So here I will choose a new and I'll open a new menu label. And this is the screen that you would see. So here you wanna name your new label. And you can also use the user code field, again, to help you sort and search for and just keep your record straight. And from the menu label information, you all can also see the additional options like being able to assign this menu label to a group, include notes for this particular menu, or include attachments to help us supporting documentation. So if I just click OK, it opens my menu label screen. And here I can work with a new menu label by adding items to my list. Note here that if I, I just search and add a food, just like we would when we're building recipes, working with other files, it adds, I added milk to this menu, and it automatically by default attaches it to an unassigned category. So this is just a generic category. There are a few ways that I could add additional categories. One is with the add category button, or I can right click and I have the menu there to add a category. And you can see that it's adding these in a very generic manner. So then from there, I might want to um, rename the categories here. So if I click over to this side of it, you'll see that it highlights the category line. So if I double click, 
or right click, then it opens up the modify category information. And from here I could modify the category name to something much more meaningful. And now I have a category named kids because I want to include a kids menu or options for kids menu items. So again, searching by any, you know, our typical search conventions by the item name, or if you do have user codes assigned, you can select items that way and continue adding to this section of my menu. If I want to select several at a time, I can certainly do that and add those to that section, that category of my menu. If I entered another item. I highlighted the category three and so that item was added to that category. If I just click and drag, I can move this item from within the, the menu label and rearrange those items within. And then again, the serving size that you see here is automatically brought in based on a couple of things. If you're working with ingredients, just bringing a single ingredient in, all of these happen to be single ingredients that I brought into this menu label. And the, the serving amount or the quantity and measure fields are by default the amount that those are either entered as when I added my ingredients, I set a specific amount and that's kind of its its default serving amount, or if I've created a recipe and I've set the serving size within the recipe, then that's the amount that's being brought in here. So by default, it, it is what it appears to be here. And if I need to make changes to that amount, I right click on the item, the food item, and then I can modify. So here I could double click to open this, access the screen or right click and choose modify item. And here I could change the amount so I might change it to one cup rather than a kid's serving. I can enter a price for this item or can also type in comments. That I might want to include on my menu and edit the items that way. So again, double click or right click on the item itself to access that modify and other options for the, the food item itself. The names, as I mentioned, may not appear as I want to in my menu label. So this is just the general name that is occurring from the record in my database. And I don't want that listed in that manner on my food menu, on my menu label. So again, if I right click, rather than modify the item, I can open this item record. So this is opening the ingredient record for this applesauce. And I want to change the, uh, the name in the common name field to just applesauce. From here, I would save this ingredient record. And what happens here with ESHA database ingredients, you will get this pop-up that just warns you, you can make changes to certain fields, but you can't make changes to others. So here I can, common name is one of the fields that I can make changes to. I wouldn't be able to make changes to the nutrients in this particular view. So I just choose yes and okay. And then that item is saved as I need it to be saved. And then you can see the name here in my menu label is changed to the way I want it to appear on the label. We have some display choices within this view. And again, if I right click here within the, the window or the screen of the menu label, I'll get this drop down menu that one of the options is display columns. So choosing that, I can choose to select a bit more information to display on the screen. So here I want to show the price on the screen and I also want to show calories. I already had it selected, but let let me just show you. From the nutrient columns, if I go to edit, it pops up the nutrients that are available. And here, if I want to display calories, go ahead and select that. OK, and then click OK again.
So now you can see that my price information, I had added the price information to the applesauce, and the calories column are showing up on this screen now. One other thing I may want to change, I'm getting a lot of decimals here, and I may not want to see that amount of precision in this view, so I can certainly change that. To change the decimals here on this view, go up to the Home tab and then My Preferences. Okay, one moment please. Let's try that again. So here in my general preferences, one of the options shown is decimal places. I can change that from four that I had by default selected to zero. Click OK. And then you can see the calories is a bit more friendly in that view. From here, I want to jump into a different menu label, um, just one that I already have formatted with a bit more foods and information, and we can take a look at the reports. So here I open menu label and an existing. So here you can see I have a bit more foods shown and I have more options available. And here you can see, I'm going to, um, you can see here that I have the categories as entrees, side dishes, beverages, and then I have combo meals. You can also notice here that different colors are coming into play on this screen. And this is a um, general setting or a general rule in Genesis that we have a color coding system. So you can see that there are dark green lines and that indicates that in ingredients that I have added to my software, to my database, so those are user added ingredients, the light green are items that I've selected from the ESHA database. So that's the da database that comes with your Genesis software. Purple lines are recipes that I've added. So my combo meals down here all in purple, you'll see that those are recipes I've created to combine a sandwich and a side. And then the calories ranges I mentioned before, you can show calories. Here I have calories ranges showing for my combo meals because that's a category that would be appropriate for showing those range, that range of calories. If I want to add that to um, a different category, again, I can double click to open the category or I can right click and then just check this show calories ranges. So here it shows as the, um, showing the range of calories for the beverages and for the combo meals. And then I want to make a couple additional changes. So one is that the category name for my entrees, maybe I want to change that to sandwiches to be a little more appropriate for this menu. So again, right clicking, modify item, and then I can change my category name to sandwiches. And with my side dishes, I want to add another item. So again, just clicking over here to highlight this item or this category, and then I can add a new item to this. So I'm just going to select this one, and it adds it to my sides. But again, I want to make some changes to this item. So I'm going to right click and modify, change the amount to one cup, set a price, and then I could add comments here if I wanted to include that. And one more thing for this food item, I want my naming to be consistent. So again, I have uppercase for my menu items, so here I need to right click and open the item record so that I can add a common name as I want to see it in uppercase. Save it. I'm going to see that message again. Yes, I want to proceed with those changes. And now my menu is looking a little more of how I want to see it. And again, from here, we can go on to the reports. So here, as I mentioned before, I did the display columns so I could show my price and my calories, but I may want to see more and the additional nutrient information. So by choosing the menu label report, 
you can see here the nutrients. So again, these are the required nutrients and it does include calories from fat in this view. And then in the upper corner, the upper right hand corner here, we have additional options for information that can be displayed in the, food, the menu label. So I'll just click through these one at a time. The price can be included. Allergens can be viewed in a couple ways. So allergens here gives a table with check marks. There's also an allergen statement. So this gives you options in how you might want to present this information, either by a, you know, a categorical type of presentation or listing each item and its specific allergens. Just a note on, on allergens in Genesis. By default, all of the allergens are showed as contained until you've marked them as otherwise. And this is intentional and it's a precaution that you've previewed all of your items and mark the allergens appropriately. So just know if you check those and you get a lot of allergens that don't apply to that food, then you need to go back to the ingredient record or to your recipe record. And again, we do cover managing your allergens in a different webinar. So you might want to check that out if you need a reminder on how to work with allergens. The additional allergen statement might be if you're working in a different country or you want to include the may contains statement, the additional allergen statement is used for that information. Item comments, a good would, again would be if you want to include more descriptive information about a menu option or that particular food, you can include that with your food menu or with your menu label and display that for customers benefit. We have the ingredient statement. I haven't formatted mine, um, so it's just pulling general information. But again, working with ingredient statements is covered in another webinar, and you can certainly include list all of the ingredients that you would need to declare for those items. We also have characteristics, and these are preset within Genesis, or there are, there are a group of them that are preset within Genesis, things like vegetarian, dairy-free, gluten-free, kosher, so you can include those preset characteristics, or you can create your own um, things like heart healthy or to that effect, and you can add your own characteristics to include. And then the label, label nutrients only. So again, that default setting is to show the required nutrients only. If you uncheck this box, then it shows the additional nutrients that you have selected. So here, if I wanted a different set of nutrients on this report, again, I can go up to home, nutrients to view, and select a different set of nutrients to display on this particular report. Keep in mind, again, this is a general rule in Genesis that if you see dashes on this report or other spreadsheet-like reports, that means you're missing data and you need to fill in those blanks. So if you see dashes in this view, you either need to go back to the ingredient item and fill in blanks for an ingredient or view work with your recipe record and in turn dive into the spreadsheet report for your recipes and identify where data is missing and fill in those blanks. And then the exporting options. Oh, sorry, I missed the standard nutrient report. Just, I'll show that. So quite similar to the food menu or the menu label report that it displays the required nutrients and then your menu items. This one, we don't have all of the additional options to display things like the price and the allergens. It's just focusing on the nutrients. And then again, export options. So when you're within the menu label itself, you have an export button right here. Clicking so would export this as an EXE or EXL file and that is an ESHA data file. So that would allow you to export this record and share it with other Genesis users. You can also choose to, um, like the reports, there are export options within the reports. So I just right clicked and I see the export report to file. I could save this file um, as, as is with all the data. I can also export to the clipboard um, if I wanted to do that and just bring up Excel and a blank workbook, I can just quickly copy and paste the information into Excel. It doesn't appear to be doing it here. 
there we go. To here, I just export it over, copy into Excel, and I could work with it there if I wanted to. So that covers the features. I know it's just a general overview and there's certainly more to work with as you get into this set of features, explore, build your recipes and your menus. I know there's a lot of complexity that a menu label could involve, but that's where we wanna say that Genesis is flexible, like with the categories and additional options for displaying information that you can choose what to work with, what to view and what to share with others. So I'll kick it back to Ben and we'll cover some questions. Perfect, thank you so much. Before we get into those questions, we'll do a little bit on training, uh, which Alicia mentioned already a, a little bit ago. Um, we have a training coming up in a couple of weeks, November 5th through 7th. It's gonna be our standard Genesis R&D training. Um, so the two day professional and then the third day optional advanced training going through the fundamentals of Genesis. Um, and then we have another training, uh, December 4th and 5th, that's gonna be a Genesis R&D professional training with menu label focus. So it is more of a, a menu label focused training. Uh, it is just two days, not the three, um, but that one's also gonna be in our Oak Brook, Illinois training facility. So if you'd like to sign up for either of those, you can go to our website to sign up for those. All right, well, we're gonna get into a few questions. Uh, if we didn't get to your question, um, please, contact us. You can always contact our sales team if you have any questions about your account status, support, um, or nutrition if you have any questions on, on using the program or those sorts of questions. Uh, or you can always reach out to our consulting team if you'd like a project done. Uh, and always we have those helpful resources, our LinkedIn page, our blog, e-newsletter, e-learning center that you can access inside of the program, past webinars on our website, all of that as well. So let's get into a few of the questions. Uh, question number one, what if I need to remove or delete an item from my menu? Sure, and let me just show Genesis again. So in deleting items, I'm gonna open up a different one. So you have items on your list and you don't wanna see those anymore. Again, with just, just like we did with modify and open the records, right click and then delete item is one of the options. Are you sure you want to? And yes, I do. So then save your menu and that item is gone. Perfect, you always push the delete button key on your keyboard as well. Uh, our next question, what if I only want to display calories on the menu label report? Sure, and there we can create a nutrients to view set that only has calories. So going back to the home tab and nutrients to view, when you're working in this set of features or these options, you have whatever, the check mark here indicates whatever set you have selected. Up on top you see modify and then edit. So this is going to allow you to create a new set of nutrients. If I only wanna see calories, over here on the right-hand side are those nutrients that I have selected. On the left-hand side are the available nutrients that I could choose to report. I'm gonna wipe out all my selected and then just add calories back from here for creating a new set of nutrients to view. You wanna choose save as and then you could name it anything that's meaningful. So like calories only and okay. So now I have a new set of nutrients to view that would be called calories only. And you can see it placed it right up here on the top. So all of the presets are down below. Any new sets of nutrients to view that you add are shown up at the top of this list. And again, the check mark is by whichever set that I want to use. So going back to my menu label for the report, the menu label report, then if I don't want to see the required nutrients and just those that I have selected by my nutrients to view, I just unchecked the label nutrients only, only and then it is displaying my set of nutrients, in this case, calories only. Perfect, our next two questions are gonna be in a similar place inside of the program. Uh, the first one being, do I have to display the colors on the menu label, you know, the purples and the greens for recipes and ingredients? 
and no you don't. One of the distinguishing factors of that is that it it's again that general coding system, the color coding system in Genesis to kind of help you know what set of files you're working with and then it does differentiate the menu label report from the standard nutrient report in an obvious manner. But if you don't want to see those colors that is a setting in the my preferences. So again up to the home tab go to my preferences and there's a colors section here. So show background color is checked by default and again you can see the the standard colors used. You could assign different colors if you wanted to here but to remove the colors from this report just uncheck that box and here you can see it refreshes with out all the color. Perfect and I mentioned if we had a second question it's just going to be inside of the preferences as well. Uh, can I choose to display? Actually, I had this question in two different ways. Can I choose to display the ingredient list information in English only? We also had the question of can I do it in multiple languages? So kind of both variations of the same question. Okay, sure. And yes, so in those menu label settings with the ingredient statement, when I select that, you can see the columns. So we have an English, French, and Spanish column. Um, so if I don't want to see those, or if I only want to include a specific one of those, I can certainly make changes to that. So home, my preferences, these are global settings within. And then in the general, oh, excuse me, the label section, we have a couple sections here. So one is allergens specific and then the general language. I can choose to show French and Spanish, choose neither. So if I uncheck those options then now it's only displayed in English. If I wanted English and Spanish I could certainly select the others. Perfect. Um, our next question, I maintain a master menu but I need to create menus for regional variations. How might I go about doing that? Sure, and so one way to go about doing that, if you have kind of a master menu and then you have slight variations or regional variations. So here, if I have this menu already prepared, I could basically make a copy of it. So if I go to File and then Save As, I already got a user code in place, so I just say, don't need to use that user code. Save as and give it a different name. Again, one thing that's meaningful to me, or it could be regional, you know, by whatever region, and then save that. Now I'm working within this copy. So I've maintained my original copy, but now I have a new copy that I can make changes to as needed. All right, our next question. Uh, some of our products fall under the menu labeling regulations. Some need to comply with packaged goods labeling regulations. How do we work with both of these in Genesis? Sure, and with Genesis you can create nutrition facts labels for the products that need those and you can include any recipes or items on the menu label. So it's just kind of a general thought of organizing your menu items and organizing your those items that need labels. Sometimes there's crossover and within the regulations or within the guidance the FDA has said that you can use a nutrition facts panel to um, fill the role of providing the additional nutrient information that's required. So of course the nutrition facts panel is going to provide your labels for the item that you need to provide that calories information, excuse me, the calories information that you need to report, but then it also serves as the additional nutrition information. There is information in the guidance that addresses um, more specifically to using the label um, for menu label um, reporting but again our training sessions do dive deeper into managing kind of that crossover approach so feel free to reach out to the training team and look to attend the training session that's coming up. Perfect and groups could definitely be used to to organize your database in that regard I think of you know, have a group for menu and a group for packaged good and, and that way you're you're able to search based on that so that you've got that separated out inside of your program too. Um, our next question, uh, we talked a lot about right clicking. Um, I mean, we have a lot of people that use a Mac. How do you right click if you use a Mac? 
Excellent question. Some of you may know that, but others may, may be a little mystified about it. So with Mac, if you're using a mouse and you can use the control key and click on the mouse button, that serves as a right click. There are also um, settings within your Mac system preferences. So it might be that it the default might be set to use two fingers, a two finger tap on the trackpad, or look in your um, system preferences and you can be you'll be able to either set it to using two fingers for a right click or perhaps the lower left hand corner or the lower right hand corner of the trackpad as that secondary click option. All right, we have two more questions. Uh, first one here, is it necessary to declare added sugars on my menus to be consistent with the 2016 NLEA requirements for labeling? So I'm going to answer this one delicately a little. Um, so it was an issue of timing when the menu label regulations came out. They were still working and they're, they're kind of written um, based off of that 1990 rule. That was the set of nutrients that we were working with. The 2016 rules were still coming into finalization. If you use the 2016 set of nutrients, um, you know, the added sugars is not part of the required nutrients listed in the menu labeling. So you're, you're required to list certain nutrients in your additional information, you can voluntarily list added sugars and other vitamins and nutrients in, or vitamins and minerals in that additional nutrient information. You want to be consistent, so um, there are certain cases where if you're using the 2016 set, you want that all-inclusive and be consistent with that. So it's not one of the required under the menu labeling um, rule. If you were using a nutrition label to serve as your nutrition information and you created a label for a packaged food, then you would need to include added sugars as part of your 2016 set on a nutrition facts label that is serving to um, cover the additional nutrition information that's required under the, the menu labeling. Great. It's a it's a complex question and, and, and has a lot of variables in there. Uh, and our last question, how do I send my information from Genesis to my electronic menu boards, websites, you know, those electronic sorts of places um, that you'd like to, to have your data, um, which is a fairly complex answer there. There's a lot of different possibilities, different functions. There's a lot of, of menu boards out there that have, um, you know, you can buy from that are pre-built. Uh, but the answer comes down to you can either use Azure Port, which is a great option, um, to export out that data into a into a text file or CSV or like a spreadsheet type file. Uh, it's always going to end up being text, but that can be opened up in a spreadsheet, um, which is a format that a lot of other systems can then pick up and import in. Um, you can also use the Genesis API. Um, which doesn't necessarily use the menu label. It's more you're pointing to specific ingredients and recipes to to pull the data to that specific menu. So you're really doing a one-to-one -one pairing from the Genesis ingredients and recipes to the items on your menu board. Um, but a lot of people use that, especially for you know, drive-through menu type, um, type reader boards, things like that. Um, or you could just export it out individually inside of the program. That's certainly a lot more hand-holding, a lot more heavy work, a lot more you know, possibilities of, of messing things up. It's definitely the, the worst of probably the, of all the options. It's not going to be an automatic, automated data export. But those are really the options. You know, a lot of it, the question comes down to probably me asking 10 more questions to get to the correct answer. Um, so if you do you know, want to, to get some, some options there and, and see what you can do, give us a call or, or an email and, and we can set up a time to talk about you know, the, the next steps you have down the path and, and the other software and, and physical pieces that you have um, so that we could maybe get the right system in place for you. But a lot of, of options there, a lot of customization um, depending on what you've got. So uh, yeah, reach out to us and, and we can talk about that. Uh, that was the last question that we had. Um, if there was any that we didn't answer or you wanted to clarify a little bit more, um, like I mentioned before, give us a call, shoot us an email, um, 
depending on which department you're looking for. I'd like to thank you all for joining us today and have a great day.